Yo, Adam Saxon with Guy and Cube. Another week, another roundup. Got some awesome stuff from the community, including where you should be focusing from your DAX knowledge perspective. Got some updates from the Power BI team as well. If you're finding us for the first time, be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the videos from both Patrick and myself. And with that, let's dig in. The folks over at datatraining.io have got a YouTube channel called How To Power BI. There's only a couple videos up there so far. It's a new channel. And the video I'm calling out has to do with drill through and drill down. And so this video just walks you through how to do that inside of Power BI. And I thought it was great. It's always great to see new folks jumping on YouTube and trying the video thing. Obviously, I'm passionate about that. And they did a great job of doing this. And I'm excited to see where they're going to be two, three years from now with this channel. So keep an eye on it. It's some good stuff. And also learn about drill through and drill down inside of Power BI. Alberto Ferrari's got a blog post looking at seven reasons why DAX is not easy. I've heard Alberto say it before and he calls it out the first line in this sentence. DAX is simple, but it's not easy. And he's right. You can look at the functions. The functions aren't overly complicated in terms of how to, you know, looking at what they do. But having that understanding of what's happening under the hoods is really where the gold is. And I've told people before in training classes and presentations and whatnot, if you learn these fundamental things, you're going to go really far with Power BI and with DAX. It is incredibly powerful. And once you master it, it, uh, it's amazing. And this blog also goes in line with something Marco said in one of our previous live streams where uh, Seth Bauer had asked him, what are the three most difficult things in DAX? And Marco echoed a lot of what's also in this blog post from Alberto. So good to see they're consistent. All right, if you're curious of what you should be focusing on from a DAX perspective, check out the links down in the description below, along with links to all the items in this week's roundup, including some bonus items, and the secret link this week, whew, I hope you enjoyed as much as I did last night. And man, 2020 is just weird. Peter Myers helped to put together a video course that is on the Power BI YouTube channel, and that is developer in a day. So if you're interested in figuring out how to do embedding with Power BI, so Power BI embedded, but also just general, like how do I work with APIs, the JavaScript framework, all of that, this video course will walk you through it from everything about how to actually use the APIs to what this embed token thing is, how to implement real level security with Power BI embedded, everything. There are 20 videos in this series and I've got a link down below to the full playlist. You also see it up above as well. So check it out if you are interested in growing your knowledge in this area. The apps windows inside of Power BI have gotten a facelift and are unifying everything. So before you had a separate area for your organization apps or my apps, and then you also had uh, the service apps that were out there that you could go and consume as part of Power BI. So like template apps, things of that nature. So now it's just a unified view. You'll see all of the apps and then you can further segment it by organization or template apps. And of course, they would go and update the UIs after I recorded a video with the old one. But looking at that new interface, I like it. It's streamlined. It's uh, pretty awesome. When you hover over things, you get more descriptions, things of that nature. So hopefully if you're using apps, check it out. Let me know in the comments below. What do you think? Did it need a facelift? Do you like the facelift? I'm curious. Chris Finland's got a blog post looking at Power BI report server. There were two things he called out in here. First is just the licensing in general. And then the other is just about the product future roadmap, that kind of stuff. The big thing on the licensing side is that now if you have SQL Server Enterprise Edition with software assurance, so software assurance is the key here, then you can actually host your Power BI report server inside of an Azure VM using the Azure hybrid benefit. He also calls out that they're working on getting some VM templates put together that you can take advantage of. You have to bring your own license though. There is nothing that's going to cover you from the VM perspective. So lots of good details on that in the blog post. If you are curious about this, definitely read the blog post and don't just listen to this summary because licensing is always intricate and there are details inside of it. So take the time, read this blog post and understand what it is that you're actually getting. And then he commented just on the future direction of Power BI report server, saying they're mainly gonna be focusing on getting the updates from Power BI desktop into Power BI report server, 
so that they can focus on the cloud. All right, I want to hand this off to you. What was your favorite item this last week? Maybe it was something I mentioned. Maybe it was something I didn't. I don't know. Let me know in the comments below. I want to hear it. If you like this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. Smash it if you so desire. If it's your first time here, hit that subscribe button. And as always, from both Patrick and myself, thank you so much for watching. Keep being awesome, and we'll see you in the next video.